Hey, hi guys. What's up? Good morning. Hi, how are you? Hope all is well. I see my buddy Digital Dragon is live. He's working on a printer, so kind of expect that to be where everybody's going to hang out, and that's fine. I got the Adventurer 5M from Flash Forge. Uh, I did buy this one. So we're going to crack it open here in just a little bit and get into the box and figure I'll wait and see if anybody wants to come and join. And if not, I'm going to run this thing and then people can come back and watch it later. So, yeah. But anyway, hi, I'm, I'm Dan, DB3D, Maker Mind Nexus, all of the above. But Dan usually works. I do apologize for the tired look. I was uh, anticipating getting this, so I was a little anxious all night. So, uh, got up kind of early and uh, waited patiently for the post office to open so I could run up and grab it because I wasn't going to make the mail carriers try and deliver that when we live in a small town and it takes me two seconds to get to the post office. So I had to get my morning coffee anyway. So morning coffee for me, found pop for the missus and come home with that big, beautiful thing. Now, I don't really know too much about the Flash Forge brand. I mean, I know about the Flash Forge brand. I'm just saying I don't know much about their printers. I've never actually owned a Flash Forge printer. So this is my first Flash Forge printer. So we'll see how this goes. Um, a lot of people who are in the bamboo circuit have and uh, have noticed some, some similarities to this printer and the bamboos. I don't have any bamboo printers as well. Um, my my printer collection is slowly dwindling away. I've been giving away printers to uh, people. Uh, it's usually what happens. I get a bunch of printers and then I start giving them away. And then I get down on printers and then I start buying more or, you know, start receiving more. And then I fix them up and I give them away. So right now, as it stands, I have one printer in my office at work that I keep there just to have to play around. Uh, in the office currently, I have the Voron the 2.4, the Lulzbot Mini, I have the uh, uh, Rohan, the uh, Rook 2020, then I have my Bear right there, actually I'm pointing the wrong direction, that's an Anet A8 Plus there, behind that is a Delta printer, there's another uh, FL Sun Super Racer right here that I just recently installed Clipper on, and I'll do some more with that later, and then back there we've got, up against the wall, there's a Ender 3, uh, Ender 3 Pro, uh, the Ender 3 Pro is currently rocking the uh, Sliceworks FDD1, their direct drive uh, extruder. I did manage to get it clogged, so I have to tear that apart and figure out what's going on. Um, I know my hair looks amazing. I don't care. It's a colic. I fight with it and fight with it. I need to get a haircut. So at some point, I'll get a haircut, and then they'll knock all that off, and it'll go away. <laughs> Uh, it looks like, uh, just so anybody, if anybody would like to know, uh, 34 months now, I've been a, uh, I've been an, a, a partner here, not a partner, an affiliate. What is up, Vince? How you doing? Good, sir. Uh, the Adventurer M5. See, look, Adventurer 5M. Sorry, I say M5. I'm, I'm so used to saying M5. It's 5M. I, I'll, I'll get it right one of these days. But yeah, so we got a Flash Forge Adventure. It's my first Flash Forge, Flash Forge machine. Wow. I'm getting another drink of coffee. Maybe I can get my myself back on uh, on track here. Right now, I'm just uh, kind of bouncing around on some stuff. I guess I should probably update the stream uh, stream settings, huh? Oops, sorry. There we go. All right. And scroll down so I can save it. There we go. Now let's go back to Stream Manager and make sure that updated like it was supposed to. 
unboxing set or unboxing setup and testing the Flash Forge Adventure M5. Let's go! Yeah, testicle box. Or te test, 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 test. You. Yeah, exactly. I can't even talk today, Shane. Thank you very much, good sir, for throwing something at me. But yes, so we have the uh, Flash Forge Adventure M5. This is a purchase, not a paid review. So my utmost honesty will be coming out because I paid my hard-earned money. Not that I don't tell the truth about things anyway, but to each their own. People will assume what people want to assume and I can't change their mind. That's not my place, not my way. I'm just going to do what I do and you like me or you hate me. Most of you guys hate me, but you tolerate me. Why? Because this is your community service. So thank you for putting in your community service hour or two. Maybe maybe three. We'll see how long it goes. Right now I'm going to probably crack this thing open, get it unboxed, and we'll see what it looks like. Um, I need to, uh, yeah. I need to get this thing opened, huh? You guys probably want to see it. Let's let's turn this camera real quick here. I got I got several several things going on here. I'm trying to not necessarily be more broad because I'm still using webcams for crying out loud. I was been looking uh, for an actual camera camera, so we'll see what happens. But let me let me check that real quick. Let's see what that view is looking like here. So give me just a second to. Not annoy you guys, so I'm gonna switch into studio mode here so I can jump through and figure out which one that one is. Uh, I don't even think I have that one set up to be honest. Oh, there we go. Okay, yeah, it's this one here. Okay, let's bump that down just a little bit. There we go. Yeah, we'll leave that right about there. tongue tangulation hey i got that one yes all right there we go okay so i'm gonna go ahead and knock off studio mode it should jump over nope it's still on me that's fine at least i know which one to go to now it's that one see there we go and you see me here and you can see the box there so we're gonna go ahead and crack that thing open and we'll get into it here and we'll see what all what all we got in the package i'm sorry i don't have some cool overhead shot i hope to get some better cameras one day but we gotta cut this bad boy open. I know the microphone situation is funny because I'm not using my normal wireless mic. I've got this little mic here. So if things sound a little funny or if I need to bring it up, let me know. Yeah, yeah, that's that's where I'm at, Nate. I'm I'm working on getting stuff. That's that's what this is all about, man. Everybody was hyping this thing up for the $2.99. They were like, for $2.99, you can't beat it because you get it for 100 bucks off on Amazon. I did tweet out the link with the, it's an affiliate link. So if you guys like this, you want one, do me the solid and use the, the affiliate link. Uh, again, I did pay for this. So there is no paid advertising here. I, I don't have to worry about somebody trying to say that. I mean, there is paid. I paid for it and I'm advertising it. So technically I am the paid advertisement for this company that I am, this is my first printer with. So we'll see how this goes. <sighs> Might be easier to set this on the floor, is my thinking. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna set this right here. Okay, it's right here on the floor, guys. You can kind of see it, but you got your after sales service manual. Set that there. Then you got a couple sticks of. Uh, Cardboard cornering to keep that safe. Throw those on the chair. Piece of styrofoam, plenty big. Ta da! Now, the bag. Here we go. Put that bad boy down. And in the box, you now we have. Nothing. Just more of the cardboard reinforcing corners and the styrofoam. So I'm going to put it kind of back together on the off chance that I need this box for any kind of a return situation. The styrofoam does touch in the middle, guys. That's pretty cool. We're pretty close to it. No, it does. So the styrofoam packing around the outside. 
around the outside. Put this up real quick. There we go. Just tuck that in there out of the way. All right, so really, you get this and then whatever's in the bag. So let's open the bag. Let's see what's in the bag. Ooh. All right. Just throw that there for now, oh boy. All right, guys. So this is how she come packaged. In the top here, you got a styrofoam with a bunch of miscellaneous things. I wanted to kind of show you before I uh, start pulling them out of here. And you guys are like, where's he getting that from? So there's that. Let's pick this guy up. Got the uh, ribbon cable here on the front taped down so that you don't rip that. Hopefully, we don't ruin that. Uh, around the outside here, again, around the outside, we got open panels. All the way around. You get to the back. It is closed up here. Uh, need to check our voltage, too, according to input voltage. Right here. It is telling me that it is... Input voltage is already 100, 120. You guys can't see that, sorry. But the sticker here is indicating that input voltage is 100 to 110, 60 to 70 hertz, or 50 to 60 hertz. Uh, you got your Ethernet. And then right here it is telling me again, uh, well, it's telling me a fuse model. So there's the information on the fuse. Let's uh, tip this thing down real quick. Take a look. Yeah, underneath, all you're seeing is belt path so you got one motor and your belt path and it is doing the same thing like uh creality does in the k1 and uh i believe bamboo does too where it's just a single belt running through down and around so it's a single motor running to the three axes or the three z axis. so there's that uh Two little yellow arrows here on the back indicate everybody's favorite thing about the latest and greatest uh, in Core XY, which is rear mounted spool holder. Wonderful. I'm, like everybody, I think we need side mounted. I think that manufacturers need to knock this off. They either that or they need to give you an alternate option to side mount here. But again, manufacturers do it because people don't complain enough. So if you don't like it, say something. Let them know. Uh, another side panel, and then of course the front. And that's a big, big brick of foam here. So let's spin this thing around and start digging into this top part here. We have our display, which is already better than the P series of uh bamboo because it's an actual touch screen. How well it will perform, I don't know yet. We'll find out. We'll set that off to the side. There's a random box here let's see what's in this box what's in the box right right guys what's in the box uh doesn't open that way it opens this way my bad there we go uh it's a toolkit you've got your awesome spool holder a bit of sarcasm there the spool holder could be better in my opinion uh the two screws to mount said spool holder a package of lube useful from negative 68 Fahrenheit to 266 Fahrenheit. It's three grams of white grease. Three grams of white grease. The 3D printing adhesive. I do have to agree with some of the uh, folks out there these days that are saying that when manufacturers trust their printers so well that they send glue with them. I don't know. We'll see if we need this. If we need this, we've got this, but Flash Forge branded glue. Your pair of clippers. You've got... Wow. So, got your uh, three, three Allen wrenches here. There we go. Okay, three Allen wrenches here. Uh, so, we got those. 
We've got a Phillips head screwdriver. Phillips, Phillips head. And then there's something in here that I did not know, but I think you guys know what this is for. Ah, pushing filament, your little filament purge pusher. And I think, yeah, that's, that's it in the box. So for right now, I'll leave all that stuff off to the side. We'll move the box. Let's go back in. Let's see what we can get here. Oh, yes, it's their burnt titanium. They send with it a small sample of burnt titanium. So that's pretty sweet because you guys know I like the Flashforge burnt titanium. It's my favorite, probably my favorite fill, favorite color filament. So set that off to the side. And uh, I think for the sake of the demo, we'll actually use the roll of, well, we'll use my Flashforge burnt titanium that I have. Yeah, see. Yeah, burnt titanium, multi spool. So, but anyway, I have a spool of it. So we'll use that since that's what they sent with it. And I happen to have some. We'll use it. Take that off of there. Here's the three pin US power cord. I happen to have a three pin power cord plugged in already that's heavier gauge than this. So I'll use that. But we'll set that off to the side. And then let's see. How hard this is to pop out of here. Not very. That's a, a big chungus. That's the big chungus of foam. That's out of there. And then, yep, we can just pull this forward and get this piece out of the back here. There's a, you just pull the uh, gantry forward and then there's a piece back here that kind of blocks that you just take out. So that's, that's all the styrofoam out. Now we have a bunch of screws we need to take out so uh, from the looks of it we'll need our wrench let me uh, let me see here if I can get in a little better and show you guys yeah it's a little hard to see with these cameras I apologize but uh, little yellow arrows indicate where screws need to come out so there's one here one here two back here and I believe that is it. It looks to be it. Just those four. Uh, I guess we could check in the manual, right? Let's let's take a look at the aftercare or after sales service manual. Let's see what it says here. Let's see. Anything? This is a warranty. Does anybody actually fill out the uh, paper warranties anymore? Does anybody ever fill those things out? I was gonna say. I mean. Most places you just keep the receipt or let them know when you purchased it and where. And they'll, they'll usually take care of you. Okay, unlocking the build plate, it shows the two screws in the back right here. And then it shows the one screw on each side. And that's it for unlocking the build plate. Then you've got the power cord and switch. And it shows that to install the screen, you need to connect that ribbon cable and then push it back and then slide it over. So we're going to push back and slide over the screen. So had I not been talking, I'd probably be done already. But let's, uh, let's turn this this way and bring this up again. There we go. All right, let's get this piece of tape off of here gently. It is a heavier reinforced tape, and that is just a thin ribbon cable. I don't want to potentially damage that. On the back here, yes, okay. Um, interesting. Okay, pick it up. And this this type of a connector is not necessarily uncommon, but I haven't seen that one before. But I I do. I do feel as though I know where we're going with this. So, uh, goes this way. Yep. Okay. I wanted to do it first just to make sure that I knew what I was doing so I can show you guys. This one here, and it's not going to be clear enough, and I do apologize, but... This one here, it snaps down and pops up. And it looks funny because you have to stick the ribbon cable in 
on this uh, edge here closest to this this little coppery bit here at the bottom uh, so you stick it in against the edge in that thin little area there and then you pop down to snap it in place and hold it so it's looks a little different than some of the other ones I've seen out there so I just wanted to make sure of it beforehand that is the case so we slide that in snap that down it holds now what we got to do is put this on There we go. A little bit of force, but it's in place now. There we go. And then, of course, everybody's favorite part, rip that off. There we go. Now, take them screws out, which, again, are indicated with yellow. Let's see if we got this right. Is that the right one? No? Is it really the smaller one? Wow. Okay. Yep. Let's see here. All right, so we'll take these four screws out, plug this thing in, and uh, fire it up. So there's one screw out. These are a pretty coarse thread, too, so it's definitely not like something that they use already in house and then send one out to you. It looks like it's just a coarse thread that they stick in, and it looks like it just threads into a piece of. Uh, plastic in the lower half there just to kind of help hold it for travel. Uh, this isn't going to be any crazy deep dive. I'm not going to tear the printer apart, at least not today. But let me see here. I am going to take its board plate off. Uh, Double-sided, powder-coated, PEI. Um, does have the little plasticky bit around here. This is a 220, 220, uh, 250, I believe. I believe it's 220, 220, 250 on the bill volume. I'll have to double check. But again, this isn't supposed to be like a, like, straight up review. This is more of a unboxing and let's check it out because, you know, that's, that's why I bought it. So let's unbox it and check it out. We'll learn together with this thing. Okay, that one's loose. This one will be loose here in a few. Then I'll have to pop those out of there. Okay, got those. Um, these back two screws are kind of in a weird place, so it probably wouldn't hurt to have either the nippers or, in my case, multi-tool. Just to reach back in here and grab these out. You don't have to. You can probably just turn it on, power it up, lift the bed, and it'll probably pop them out of there. But I'd rather play it safe. One extra step that guarantees I'm not going to damage anything in first boot up. There you go. Them four screws are now out of there. So that's cool. Now let's throw some power at this thing. I guess. Let's see here. Ow. Stab myself. There you go. Ta da! Take off all the little protective stuff and make it officially mine, you know? All right. Uh, one other thing here. We've got the Bowden Bowden, however you want to say it. We've got that lovely tube here. Uh, let's take the clip out of here real quick. On the hot end, it just slides in because I, I've been seeing some things on this where they say with the hot end side, you just push the filament through drop it in, and then you uh, kind of go from there. There we go. All right. But on the runout sensor side, you just pop that in. It's lined up, ready to go. This side just drops in the hot in there and sits there. Uh, I guess, against my better judgment, I am going to mount this uh, spool holder real quick. So let's turn this thing around. Not a fan of these tool holders on the back. Not too many of us are. A lot of us have started to express our unhappiness with having to constantly spin the printer around just to put on a roll of filament. So, let's see. Yep, 
that is the right one for it. Good. Screw in the hole. Line it up to arrow. And whoops. Start to tighten it in. Get it started a little bit. Now we'll get the other one here. I'm talking to you guys about it. Let me at least show it to you, right? There we go. Oops. Dropped the screw, but it didn't fall off the bench. Thank goodness. Okay. Come on, quit moving. Quit arguing with me. Give me this. Sheesh. Yeah, like, big old, like, dopey hands, man. Big dopey hands. There we go. There it is. Okay. You can get these things both mounted down here and we'll get it fired up and kind of check through the menus and stuff and see what we can get. I'm probably going to print the panels and stuff for it. It does have like the P series P1, P1S, right? P1S? Was that the first one? The S? I don't remember anymore. It's been so long. I'm getting confused in all of their craziness. But let's spin this thing around now this way. Because that'll be the important way. Let me find my power cable. Big heavy three pin back here. Plug this in. Okay. Well, first boot up. Let's see if I can get you guys in close enough to actually see anything. Here. Uh, let's bring this up. And... Bring it in a little bit closer. I don't know how good that's going to be, guys. I, I hope it'll be better for you, but we'll find out. Let's fire this thing up now. Here we go. Power's on. There we go. Flash forge on the screen. No, it's a bit blurry. All right. Got my filament. I'm just going to stick it back here on the reel. There we go. Just for right now. It's on there out of the way. Uh oh. What the heck? It played me a song. Did you guys hear that? I don't know if the microphone picked that up. Did you guys, were you able to catch the little tune there? That's pretty crazy. It's cool. Don't get me wrong. It's cool. But here we go. We got to set up our language and stuff. So it is currently on English. We'll hit next. Right, pretty responsive there. Uh, printing preparation. Please confirm all packaging materials were taken out. The printer needs to calibrate uh, for the current environment. Please ensure that the heated bed is unlocked before calibration and click next. Okay, well again, the four screws are out. So next, now it's gonna home. Back you guys up here just a skosh. That way you guys can kind of see as much of it as you can. That makes a lot of noise. Wow. I don't know if you guys can hear this stuff through the mic, but that bed moving up made made a lot of noise. <laughs> so, uh, currently it is heating up to uh, 230 on the... Uh, uh, the printer is under self-detecting and it may take several minutes. Okay, well, it's currently heating up to 230. It's at 136, 141. So 230 is the target temp. Let me see something real quick here. If I kill that, does that help? No, gosh, no. Light, light brings it, makes it uh, even worse. At some point, a better studio. I get it, guys, I get it. 210, 212, 215. It is moving quick, guys. Wow. That fan is loud. There's no auxiliary fan on the side, like in the K1 and in the P1, or the P, the, the Bamboo series and the Creality K series. There's no side fan. That noise is coming from this hot end fan here. And the fans on the sides. There's like a, a fan on the side that blows through, and then the perk cooling fan on the front. So... Those fans are 
definitely loud. It's also heating the bed up or cooling the bed down now to uh, 120. So I'm going to sit down here in the chair, grab a drink of coffee, and we'll just kind of let it go through its uh, self-start up here. There we go. All right. And if anybody is wondering, yes, after uh, I'm done streaming today here with this, I will be uploading it over to YouTube. So it'll be over on the MakerMind YouTube channel if anybody wants to uh, kind of watch this process again. Also, uh, for anyone who is watching this on YouTube, thank you. Currently, there's a little bit of orange filament or red filament that came out of the nozzle. So it is leading me to believe that it was a tested unit, not necessarily a tested tested, but the hardware was tested before being sent out. So good thing, you know, the nozzle does come down and touch the bed. So it is using your your uh, touch probing. I do have the 0 0.4 nozzle on here. Um, if things go well, maybe we'll get a 0 0.6 or 0 0.8 or even the smaller 2.5. We'll see. They're about 40 bucks a piece for the nozzles. So if anybody is interested in getting one of these, it is a proprietary hot-end assembly with uh, nozzle and heater and everything all in one. Um, Right now, today, I just want to get this thing printing and kind of showing it off a little bit. So we'll get it printing and kind of go through some stuff with it here. A uh, couple of small prints, maybe, or a small print at least. Just something kind of quick to get it out of the box, get it running, and then I'll get myself more familiar with the unit and uh, come back and we'll do some more stuff with it. But I don't know if you guys can hear the noise there of it dropping, but... The Z Motion, it is a, a bit of a loud machine, but now it's doing its resonance tuning, so I'm going to let it go. I don't know if you guys can see it or not, but you should be able to see the rippling in the camera there of the hot end going back and forth. The refresh rate on the camera is not as great, so you can kind of see it actually rippling. But yeah, so... Right now it is done with the homing, leveling, and now it's doing vibration. And then after the vibration test, it's done, it says. It says completed. So let's we'll see how that goes. By the way, again, Nate, Out of Danger Den, and 3D Medic Vince over on Twitch. Thank you guys for coming and hanging out with me while I do this. Uh, anybody else who maybe is hiding, say something, say hi or whatever, and I'm Get a little hello to you back. You guys hear that aircraft taking off? Kind of sounds like a helicopter building up its uh, building up its uh, speed for takeoff. There is definitely a lot of. Uh, it is definitely very bamboo P series when it comes to its overall. Uh, I don't own a bamboo, never have. Um, but from what I've seen of the bamboos uh, and and see of this, very similar. Just like the K1 that I had, the K1 was a bit more polished. Uh, I did like the K1. I still quite do enjoy the K1. Uh, would love to get a K1C. <laughs> But for a hundred bucks off on the Adventurer 5M, I didn't think I could necessarily beat that deal, you know? Yeah, you can still hear that fan up there just whooshing away. And, and I don't want to kill the background noise because I want you guys to be able to hear what I'm hearing or as much of what I'm hearing as you guys can. My hair is just atrocious. I do apologize. But... Yeah, I mean, I want you guys to kind of experience this the best you can. The vibrations are probably getting picked up through the microphone, but that's, uh, she's a spicy meatball, guys. It's getting loud. So. 
And since this is an Adventurer 5M, you know, it's not the Pro. It sounds like a jet. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, the, the fan noise is very jet whooshy. And then the uh, vibration that you're hearing, the vibration noise, is definitely... It's 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 a bit of a loud machine, at least through this part. Um, still got to figure out what we're going to throw at it for a print. Uh, vibration testing, I think, is done now. It just got quiet, but it's still still kind of going. We're we're two minutes into a vibration, or it says two minutes and fifteen seconds left. So we'll let it kind of do its thing there. I don't know if it's going to do a Z. I don't think it's going to do any kind of calibration on the Z. I don't know. It's still counting down, though, so we're going to let it do its thing. But, yeah, that fan noise is still pretty loud. Definitely after the uh, uh, playing around with it a little bit and getting used to how it prints, we'll have it print its own parts for the uh, closing it up, you know. Don't need to lubricate? Nope. Not not right away. Uh give me a second here. Let me let me let me go back and check the beginner's guide here for you. Uh pull everything out of the box, which we did. Take all the packaging out, which we did. Put the spool holder on the back, which we did. Um, let's see. Bowden tube is placed in both spots like it's supposed to be. Uh, pull the uh, ribbon cable, and we did. We connected that up to the display. The display is working. Slide the display into place. Take the screws out. Power it on. Um, does say cut off the bent end of the filament and just go. Yeah, there is nothing about lubricating. There is about putting glue down. So, out the gate, everything must be pre-lubricated because it's not saying anything about doing that. And then we go right into the uh, the Chinese instructions. So, yeah, there's there's nothing in the book about doing any actual lubrication. And we're at 18 seconds now to go. So, once that part's done, we'll load the uh, burnt titanium. It's only fitting. I have Flash Forge burnt titanium. It's only fitting that since they sent me a sample roll that I just used my big roll so we can actually print something interesting. We'll see what's on here after the fact. Uh, this is running Clipper, and it is a lockdown version of Clipper, so being able to access certain things are not there. Um, so I will be looking into how to make it more friendly, so be watching for that kind of stuff, too, because we will figure out how to make it more friendly. Um, screen went to sleep, so that does do that. It is telling me here, load filament. Please load the filament according to the instructions below. Click load. So it says to cut off the bent part of the filament, pass it through the filament runout or the filament sensor until it is seen from the other end of the filament guide to... And then insert the filament to the uh, feeding roller. So to load this, I'll bring you guys in again here. Lift this up a little bit. I know it's really, my white balance sucks, guys. I'm sorry. But what they're saying to do is take this end out. It's just friction fit. So you take this end out and push the filament through till it's coming out here. Then push the filament down into the top here. Can I do this without hurting you guys too much? Right there where the hole is. You push the filament down into there until the gears grab it. Once the gears grab the filament, when you hit load and pull through, it should just pull everything down and into place and seat that. So hopefully the clipper config can be uh, backed up. Yeah, yeah, Nate, that would be nice. I do know that I have seen some websites where they were able to get a copy of the file, uh, the firmware file for this. And we're able to enable root access and a few other things, like getting SSH enabled and then having access to uh, certain other things. I'm going to look into some of the Creality K1 stuff that's out there, the Creality K1 helper, and see if anything in there can be utilized on this. 
uh, for doing installs of things like Moonraker and mainsail fluid, stuff like that. So I am going to look into those kinds of things and see if we can maybe get that to work with this as well. And then it can, you know, be more useful. Uh, let me put the filament on the spool holder the right way. Let's get this filament loaded. Okay, so cut it at a bit of an angle or cut the little nasty end off. Push it up into the tube. Way up and through, here it comes. There we go, we got some burnt titanium popping out the other end. Back it up a little bit. There we go. Okay, now we push it down into the hole and hit load. Now that jet engine fires up again. But yeah, I have been seeing some stuff on it, Nate. I've been doing a little bit of research on some guys have gotten root access. So hopefully once root access has gotten um be able to get some other fun stuff installed currently it is attempting to heat up to the 220 you can hear the jet engine just getting better and better it's at 153 163 172 180 85 88 92 so it heats up pretty quick i will give them that too it does have a pretty quick heat up 215, 216, 218. There we go. Heating is completed and now it is pulling the filament down in. And you can see the tube is getting pulled through. And there we go. Now you guys can see that it is purging out the other color that I definitely did not put in there. That's a red. So it is purging. So there's that. And I do see the titanium now coming through. And uh, when is it going to stop purging? It's still purging. It doesn't have a stop option, and it's still just going away. Um, there we go. Okay. Loading is complete. Please clean the filament from the nozzle and platform, and then click print. What is this? So right out the gate, they want you to click print? Okay. Well, here we go. Print. There we go. Uh, cube PLA test. So now it is going to print a cube PLA test. You can see their, their version of clipper screen or control screen, whatever they call that. So here we go. We back you guys up a little bit more now. So you guys kind of see everything happening. Get all these tools out of the way that are still floating around up here. There we go. All right. Let's see what this does. You know, I did not apply any glue, and I uh, did not wipe the build plate down first. So um, I'm kind of thinking we may end up with a fail here right out the gate. So let's let's real quick before it takes off, let's pull this real fast. Got my filament, or my my IPA, and a microfiber. What's the temp at on the build plate? 33, 34? Okay, we got a we got a few before it takes off. There we go. I am not applying glue to start because I want to see if it's more or less just a belt and suspenders kind of a theory they're going with here, or if it is a necessity. I'm thinking it's belt and suspenders, but we'll find out. We're at 219, 220 on the hot end, and 42 currently on the build plate. There we go, 43. So the build surface does take a little while to heat up. It's going up to 50 C, so... We'll see how this turns out. Cross our fingers and hope that it works. Ooh, I am going to get that little blob that fell down back there. Here we go. Fans kicking up. That thing is definitely loud. And it's doing this. 
The first layer is looking nice. I know it's hard to see a dark filament on a dark build surface, so I do apologize, but just know that that first layer is looking pretty good, guys. Oh, there we go. Of course, like all Core XYs these days, throws down that first layer and then picks up speed, so... Does it tell me any kind of speed setting or speeds on the screen? No. And bear in mind, I have yet to connect this to the internet, too. It's not even connected to my network. So, there is that. And of course, this is their pre sliced file that's on here. So, I'm going to try and figure out maybe how to pull that off there so we can look at the G-code and see what they've got set up for uh, the slicer settings on this thing. Yeah, they are using cubic infill, so, but it's moving pretty quick. Uh, it is saying that it's got four minutes remaining on this print, too, so there's only like a five-minute print. It's already 30% done, uh, according to the progress bar. I'm not gonna lie. So far, I'm I'm impressed. It is a little bit smaller than your your bamboos. It's not a 250. It's a 220, 220 uh, by it's either 220 or 250. I, I don't recall off the top of my head. Uh, and of course, I can't tell from the box. Uh, I did I did look it up the other day. I believe it was either 220 cubed or 220, 220, 250 on the Z. One or the other. Oh. And it did come loose. You guys see that floating there? Yep. All right. Well, let's go ahead and cancel that. Yes, we wish to cancel the print. So it did come loose. And it is taking a while to cancel after I hit cancel print. It's still, there it goes. So, yeah, we did, we did lose that first print. It did let go. And it did play me a nice little tone to let me know that it is canceled. Um, first layer, though, guys. Let me let me do this. This camera tends to focus a little better. Usually, now that I'm saying something about it, it won't because I'm in the way. But the the first layer was not terrible. I, but I guess we'll put a little bit of their adhesive on and let's put a little glue on there and we'll try that again. Try a little bit of their it's not it's actually a liquid adhesive. It's it's a shake bottle. And it does say it's for PLA, ABS, ASA, and PETG. Strong adhesive, strong, uh, easy release, simple to clean. Uh, instructions, please head to supply. Oh, press, uh, press the head and apply evenly. Wash with water after printing. Okay. Well, let's give it a try. Uh, that that looks kind of familiar to me, guys. Let me let me jump back over here to this one. That looks kind of familiar to me. I, I know somebody else who's got a bed adhesive product that has a similar uh, type of little sponge there. But press, and then. I'm not really wanting to apply it everywhere. But I do know where the print goes, so I will apply evenly throughout that area, that general area. It's uh, interesting smelling stuff. It's not a toxic smell, so I could be wrong. Might be produced by the same company. Uh, well, I know that uh, the individual in Hobart 
Uh, I know TH3D, they use a similar type of sponge head, and he makes his stuff in the shop there. So, uh, but let's see here now. Let's figure out how to make this thing print again. Uh, is that our models? Yeah. And, of course, the little cube that was on there is not in there. So that must be something that's hard-coded into the startup. There's a desk organizer. An, it says, ice cream PLA takes one hour. Here's a keychain that takes four minutes. Let's do the four-minute keychain. Nothing special. Oh, it has an option to turn on leveling? Well, interesting. We'll run it with the stock bed level that it got. Let's see what this does. Four minutes, seven seconds. All right. Here's a four minute, seven second keychain. Let's let's just see what we get. And while I'm waiting for that, I'm going to kind of clean up a little bit here. Get some of this stuff out of the way while we wait for it to start and go. <laughs> Um, again, uh, we'll be going to the Rocky Mountain Rep Rap Fest, April uh, 20th and 21st. Uh, planning on getting into town like April uh, April 18th, I believe. So we'll be there the 18th, 19th, 20th, 21st, 22nd, and then heading back the day of the 22nd so that I can be back home by the evening of the 22nd or 23rd. So that is the plan. That is the goal. If anybody's going to Rocky Mountain, I do hope to see those who go. And for those who can't go or can't make it, I will try to stream from the event so people can see, you know, what's going on there. I'm not exactly sure why it's riding around the outside so much. But we did apply a little bit of an adhesive. And I'm sure if I gave the build plate a, a good scrub down, it would probably hold a little better. You know, the old hit it with the dish soap and scrubby pad. So we'll we'll give that a shot and see if we can get away with no adhesive necessary, at least for standard prints anyway. Another pair of nippers. But, yeah, again, that first layer is looking pretty good. Uh, cannot complain. Here we go. It actually looks like the Scooby-Doo uh, dog tag. You know, good old Scooby. That's what it looks like. Huh. It says it's a four minute and seven second print. Uh, it says it's got one minute left. It's 30% done already. So I don't know that it's been four minutes or that it'll be a four minute print. It's it's looking pretty good, guys. Uh, I mean, for a three hundred dollar Core XY that's got some decent speed on it so far. I mean, we're one print in, so I can't can't say long term what it's going to be like. But I mean, so far out of the box experience isn't terrible. I mean, setup's not that hard. There wasn't a lot to it. I mean, I removed four screws, put in two screws, hooked up a screen. Plugged it into power, fed some filament in. You know, I mean, realistically, probably have this thing up and printing in 15, 20 minutes. Uh, inexperienced person, maybe a half an hour. Um, but, 
Yeah, I mean, 10, 15 minutes setup time for somebody who's got a little bit of experience, you know, probably, like I said, half an hour for someone who doesn't. Not a bad out-of-the-box experience. Um, like I said, I'm not a fan of the fact that it is lockdown clipper, but if you're new to 3D printing, you shouldn't have, or I shouldn't say you shouldn't have access to those things, but until you know what they are, you probably shouldn't play around with the, a lot of the extra features in clipper. So, I, I mean, I, I get it, but I still don't like it. And, uh, again, when you're using open source firmware, you should really stick to the open source and uh, release your code. So, again, I paid for it with my own monies. Uh, do, not, do not like the fact that I am limited in what I can do with my hardware that I paid for. There's a, that thing in my head where I understand where the manufacturer is coming from, as in they don't want to give it to you and then have you change something and break it, and now you want them to fix what you broke, and that's not right. And I understand that. At the same time, I still think you got to give the people the choice. It is they, they are buying hardware, and the hardware is theirs. So, But there we go. Not a bad-looking first print first successful print you know and then there we go let go not that hard to let go uh, i got some crazy prime lines going on here it does these crazy little zigzaggy prime lines i would like to get camp installed just because i've been finding camp for clipper is a nice thing to have real easy to put in too you just basically set it in there it grabs the back and boom done so there's that, and it is the little Flash Forge keychain. Let me jump back to the bigger camera here. We'll see if we can get it to focus for you. There you go. Look at that. See? All in all, quality is good. The sides look nice. It is a small print, though, so there's not a lot to it. But there's the Flash Forge key tag. Looks good. Uh, I think this stream, as you guys are seeing it, is going to end here because I want to upload this to YouTube. Um, before I go, again, I just want to come back and say my, my overall, um, the overall is this right now for $299, $317 shipped to my door. Uh, got it in two days from Amazon. Uh, this is a first impression, like unboxing, set it up, got it going. Is there a lot that I don't like? And it's the obvious stuff, you know, the, 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 you know, closed source software or firmware, um, the kind of, uh, pardon my mouth, but the bastardizing of the firmware, you know, locking out a lot of things from someone, uh, people with experience, realities, getting their hands, uh, getting, getting the hang of it with the, if you root this understand, and then they make you, you know, they make you agree to, if you root this, you're going to be saying goodbye to any kind of a warranty that's fine and we should have an option similar to that on here hopefully flash forge will come around and that'll be the case um i do plan to look into some other avenues for getting those kinds of uh freedoms that being said though all in all for 299 dollars again 317 dollars and some change shipped to my door got it in two days and inexperienced individual 30 minutes at most and you're up and running it's it's not bad you're talking again the two screws in the back one screw on each side take those out put the two screws in the back for the filament holder put the filament holder on which again a thing i dislike the filament holder on the back we need to figure out a way to move them to the side whether it be left or right i don't really care but we need to be able to move those to the side um noise it is it is noisy it is definitely noisy so if you're going to have this in your office make sure you can tolerate the noise <laughs> um and other than that i mean it is quick the quality look good you know yeah I, so again tanner good to see you glad you're here mr ricky the tanner i'm glad you're doing well i hope uh, but yeah for 299 dollars, good sir i would say this is first impression. So I would say if you got the money and you're looking for a clipper based core XY fast printer, 
You don't care about the noise. You don't care about the violations of the uh, open source community guidelines. If those things don't bother you, spend the money, get the printer. It, it seems like a decent printer. Of course, we only have one printer. And uh, Mr. Tanner, I don't know if you saw this yet or not, but this was the first successful print. We did just their little Flash Forge uh, keychain. The overall print quality looks pretty good for the speed. It took uh, about four minutes. It's about a four minute print. Not terrible. And the quality looks good. The layers look nice. I did use my full roll or my, my roll of their uh, burnt titanium, the Flash Forge burnt titanium, because they do send a, a uh, sample roll of burnt titanium. I figured I have a roll because I love this stuff. It's like my favorite color in their filaments. If they did a burnt titanium green, I think I'd be happier. But uh, that being said, though, guys, let me go ahead and, and wrap this part up. I'll end the stream here. I'll get it uploading to YouTube. And then if you guys would like to see more, we'll do it. I'll fire up the stream again and we'll kind of play around a little bit more with it. I'll throw a bigger file at it. We'll get a slicer profile set up and kind of go through that. But this was just the initial what do I think of the printer and how does it perform? And I managed to do that at right about an hour. So again, $2.99, Amazon, uh, on YouTube, I will put an affiliate link in the description down below. Uh, you can get it for that hundred bucks off. The affiliate link helps me out. So if you want one, you like it, help your boy out so I can get better hardware and stuff in here for lighting, cameras, microphones, all that good stuff. If you guys could help, greatly appreciate it. All right. Stay out of trouble, stay out of jail. Happy 3D printing. I will fire this stream right back up here in a moment. But for right now, bye guys.